Hi guys, it's Heather Darnall and welcome back to my art channel. So I'm down to the last few boxes of packing things and the last few days of being here in this house and I am super sad but I am super happy at the same time because I have one more opportunity to paint with you today. And today's painting is just going to go back to the biblical arena. It's really for me and my reasons um, so I hope they are uh, fulfilling for you as they are for me but especially right now because we're up and ready to travel so soon, I really did think that this particular painting would be helpful um, to redirect my focus back on God and his constant guidance that he provides for us, which in this painting, it's going to be two pillars, one of fire and one of clouds, but they're actually gonna be combined into one pillar. So if you're familiar with the book of Exodus, which is in the Old Testament, you'll remember that at one point he revealed his presence to the children of Israel, which he just freed out of bondage from Egypt. Um, he revealed himself in a pillar of fire and a pillar of clouds so that they would have a guide, so to speak, physically to follow as he led them through the wilderness and have a light of some sorts when they traveled, um, especially at night. And given, like I said, the fact that we're about to travel, I need to really be reminded that God is always there to be my guide and your guide. And he is always there to lead us down good paths, which is his path and the only path that we would want, should want to be on. But anyways, it's really, really hard to trust that sometimes, guys, because we're just, you know, we're so wishy-washy, which also brings us to today's ministry snack, which comes from the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verses five and six and it reads trust in the lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight make straight your paths you guys it is so hard to trust i've been burned you've been burned everybody's been burned no one can say they haven't been burned at some point or with something or from something um and that's just the way of life that's just life life is hard no one said it's gonna be easy um, so yeah, to really just divvy up your trust on a silver platter and hand it over to God, that's not easy because you think about it, you know, being burned, especially by people or situations that we were, that we especially depend on, you know, churches are run by sinners, police stations are, you know, cops are sinners, teachers are sinners, politicians are sinners. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. We're all fallen. There is no perfect person. So we're going to, we're going to, you know, get the short end of the stick from somebody at some point. And it's just really, it's a bummer because right when someone fails us, we just don't want to trust. And God knows that it's not going to be easy to trust because we get burned time and time and time again. But because God will never burn us, he will never leave us astray. He will never lead us down the wrong path is why he wants us to trust us because he is all loving, all powerful and never changing. So it's vital that we do that. And I know you guys, because we want to just focus on all the bad, but if we keep doing that, we'll never get to the good and trying to lean on your own understanding is not going to get you any further. I mean, yes, this is a very popular verse that you might have seen, you know, in Hobby Lobby or on a plaque or something. And I think a lot of us just tend to just take it for surface level, but not really understanding the full depth of it. To also lean on your own understanding and not taking you very far with it, it's because, again, we're also human. We cannot process things the way God does. He doesn't even need to process things because he's all-knowing, he's omniscient. Whereas you and I, we're sitting here, we've got to okay, think about it, make some sense of it. Is this legit? Is this not legit? Uh, what are my choices? What are my options? What's the best way? What's the best route? So, and so on and so on. You know what I mean? And so when we don't have conclusions or answers, we just get more frustrated and that tends to weaken our trust even more. So if you give your heart to God, he is going to cleanse it because our heart without God is really wishy-washy. We just want to focus on sin. We want to focus on our own thing. We want to figure everything out our own. And we just tend to really put ourselves down the path of failure. And so to really just want that change in life, it has to be legit. You have to want it, you guys, not just go, eh, that'd be nice. Yeah, it would be nice, so make it happen. I mean, if you really would want think it would be nice, why not do anything about it? The work is hard. It's not easy in the process. But when you practice at it and you really, you know, make an effort day to day to day, you'll find those changes just like you would at a gym if you eat right 
and better every day and exercise as needed and you find yourself going through a physical and mental change. Same thing here. Um, so when you depend on your understanding, like I said, you're just going to fall flat on your face and it's not going to get anywhere. And God wants us to accept the fact that we're not going to understand things the way he knows things. Just like when we tell our kids, hey, this, 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 and that's all I'm going to tell you. You're not going to understand it, so you need to accept this fact here. Just the way God is telling us the same thing. He's only revealing so much that we, and because we're not going to be able to understand the rest of it, which is why, again, we need to trust him. And when we trust him, he will make straight our paths. Because you guys know, all of us know, our paths are all over the place. And life's paths are always going to be all over the place. So when we have his hand in our hand and our hand in his hand, in his hand it's going to be so much of a more smooth ride um, that it's going to be bearable and even a pleasure at, while we're at it. You know what I mean? Because we have God's grace, his glory, his mercy, his forgiveness, and his lovingness. And that, you guys, woo, that I talk about, filled to the rim with good stuff. And we all need that because, like I said, this world can be pretty dark and just feel like a place we can't even trust to be in our own home sometimes. But again, that's not always the case when you put your trust and your love and faith in God. All right, guys, let's go to the table and get started. I'm beginning my project by using a T ruler to measure the center line of the canvas so I'll know where to put my strip of painter's tape so that I can keep each side clean and protected. Here I'm using my one inch tip flat brush or wash brush with the color Prussian Blue Hue with about a 50-50 mix of GAC 500, which stands for Golden Artist Colors as an artist grade product used to help extend your paints as well as help with the flow of your paints. GAC or GAC 800 is another good option in that line of products. Notice I've only picked up paint on my brush a few times, whereas without an extender, I spend more time trying to pick up paint as well as ensuring even coverage, so a flow extender of some sort is a wonderful luxury to have, especially when covering larger areas. After a couple of coats have dried, I'm now using another brush to tap my large fan brush that's been dipped into some iridescent white to give the night sky some stars. For the Pillar of Fire, I switched to my number 8 flat shader brush using the color Pyro Red as the base coat, which is just a quick coat. Take note and make the edges rather jagged while keeping the width of the pillar pretty consistent. After I apply the Pyro Red, I immediately add Cadmium Orange Hue followed by Cadmium Yellow Deep Hue, but I also keep some red and orange trimming. To make the flames, I use a combination of the chisel edge of my brush for those more defined lines and the whole flat brush. Notice I add a few more small areas of cadmium orange followed by pyrrole red to keep a variety of flame colors, but I also try to keep most of my brush strokes going in a diagonal direction, sort of like the traits of a fire tornado.
Now I add a little bit of titanium white to add to the color of flames, which white also represents the hottest part of the flame. After the titanium white, I continue to blend more pyrrole red, cadmium orange hue, and cadmium yellow deep hue, but I also add an iridescent dreamy lemon yellow to really make the flames come to life. You'll also see me use the chisel edge of my brush along the sides, which is just to add some wispy flames, which helps keeps the fire more realistic. Now for the reveal. Onto the pillar of cloud side of the painting, I go back to my one inch tip flat brush using a combination of about 80% titanium white to about 20% light blue violet. That's of course mixed with about a 50-50 ratio of paint to GAC 500 or GAC 500 to help my paint flow smoothly. For the base coat of the pillar, I switch brushes again to another number 8 flat shader using about a 50-50 mix of a phthalo blue and Payne's gray, just doing small circular strokes. After that's done, I go back and add some titanium white on top while it's still wet to change the color a bit and to bring the tint down. Notice I do the same motion of brush strokes and that I don't make sure it's evenly covered because I want a few different levels of shades of gray for shadowing in the clouds. I continue to add titanium white to brighten up the clouds and to keep shaping them, only now I'm using my number 6 filbert brush.
Here's the reveal for this side, but I'm not done shaping my clouds. Plus, by keeping the majority of the titanium white on the left suggests highlights from the sun, but I'm also including a tidbit of iridescent white so that each side will have iridescent details that balance out the composition. Notice I add some wispy clouds as well to add to that balance. Since I'm not super talented in lettering, I resort to some one-inch adhesive letter stencils that spell out Exodus, which is in the Old Testament where this particular description of God's presence is described as he is leading and guiding the Israelites. I use silver for the cloud side and gold for the fire side. After a few coats, I remove the stencils so that I can use another small stencil to put in the chapter and verse. Goodness, I just love these colors and details. And all I can say is that although I love how this turned out, no painting will ever come close to God's actual presence, no matter the way he chooses to reveal himself, for it will be more glorious than words can describe or talented hands can ever paint. So before I end this, I wanted to briefly talk about this Bible verse so that it sinks in for those who have heard of it but don't really understand the significance, or for those who have never heard of it, period. Either way, Exodus chapter 13 verse 21 reads, and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, that they may travel by day and night. You know, so often many of us tend to dismiss God and his infinite effortless power that he can do. And it's not to make his head as big as his powers that many can easily assume. Rather, his powers and unlimited abilities are for us, so that we are constantly supplied with everything we need. After all, he created us. We are his children and would do anything to keep us under his wings, just as we would do the same for our own kids. The love he put in our hearts for our kids is a reflection of his love for us. We naturally want to protect our kids, provide for them, even allow them to have countless tangible items we know they don't need, simply because we love them and we want a relationship of love and thanks with them. Again, God does the same for us. Well, in this picture, God just freed his people from bondage and slavery with numerous wonders to show his children. And when I say children, I don't mean kids like my five-year-old. I mean every man, woman, and child, because no matter our age, again, we are all God's children. But he freed his people with such extravagant miracles to prove his mighty hand and that there is no obstacle bigger than him. These miracles comforted his children, knowing he was not only there for them by fighting for them, but also physically by revealing himself, which was in a pillar of fire as well as a pillar of clouds. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't mess with fire. I appreciate fire for its ability to cook my food and provide warmth and light. But apart from that, you don't touch it. You simply respect it. And although clouds may not burn you like fire would, but walking into them would surely take away any vision that you can mentally process in order for you to use your God-given survival instincts. So with these two forms that God chose to reveal himself in, indicate greatness on a number of levels along with the consequences one chooses to touch or walk into. 
but these two forms not only provided his children some sort of physical presence so that they may stay focused on him, as we all need to stay focused on him, with or without fire or clouds, but that they would also have the light they needed to travel both by day and or night. God doesn't need rest. He doesn't need to call it quits at night to recoup like we do. He brought his children into the wilderness for a reason, a place of uncertainty that could easily make anyone grow fear because of the uncertainty. And being in an unfamiliar place in the middle of the night doesn't help. If anything, it adds to the fear. At least I'd be shaking in my boots. I mean, who knows what's out there? Well, God does, and he wasn't going to let anything get in the way of his children on a journey where they were all starting a new chapter in their lives. He wanted them to develop a trusting and loving relationship with him. And what better way to do that, which is sometimes forcing us to get out of our current situation, whether we were already happy or not, to trust in him that he will be with us day and night, 24-7, giving us everything we need so that we will constantly depend on him to enrich and fulfill our lives and hearts the way he intended mankind to have, which reflects him. You guys, we all start new chapters in our lives. We all have new beginnings from time to time. Yet we tend to forget about the author of those chapters, which is God. He has a plan for each and every one of us. And instead, we'd like to think of ourselves being the author of our book. But we're human. We have obstacles, limitations, lack of understanding and knowledge in many areas. And because of our human traits, we waste so much time trying to figure everything out ourselves or getting through our problems on our own and still end up coming out shortchanged and utterly disappointed. Like I said earlier, I'm about to pick up and move to another state. I'm about to go into unfamiliar territory, so to speak. I need God more than I even realize because he's the provider and protector. I need to keep an eye out for that pillar of clouds by day and the pillar of fire by night, figuratively speaking, so that I will always be guided in the direction he has prepaid for me and my family, just as he does with each and every one of us. Believe it or not, God reveals himself to us numerous times every day. We just choose to ignore him. Just think, when you see a breathtaking sunrise or sunset, that's God. When you see a beautiful rainbow, that's God. When you see a gorgeous landscaping, that's God. He is there calling your name to see what he made for you to enjoy and so that you know he's everywhere. He doesn't just restrict his presence to a church. After all, churches are just buildings. It's the congregation or the body of church that matters, which is us. So if you're afraid you're a hopeless mess and can't be saved, it doesn't matter what your past looks like. And believe me, I'm the worst sinner. My past is a serious hot mess. What matters is what path you want to be on from here on out. Ask yourself, do you want a lion to protect and guide you who is as gentle as a lamb, yet as insanely dangerous like fire to anyone who dares mess with you and your protector? Or do you want to rely on humans who are flawed and bound to fail us, intentionally or unintentionally? It just happens because if we're not focused on God, we're swallowed up by sin and by our enemy who will eventually lead us down a path of wrath, agony, darkness, and pain. And no, hell is not a party central where you read magazines, drink from kegs, shoot pool, and listen to your favorite jams. The enemy wants you to think that it is because he is the great deceiver so you will continue to live in sin and on a path towards eternal misery where you will be alone. Boy, I know that was a lot. And I know I tend to say more than usual when I paint something biblical. It's just because it means so much to me and I love sharing God's word. So thank you so much for listening. I hope I was able to unpack the meaning of this picture so that you're able to take something away from it and be reminded that no matter the obstacles you're going through, God is there to help you and guide you, no matter if it's day or night. And he never stops to rest because he's always working in your favor. You just have to be wholeheartedly open to seeking him to actually witness and receive what you're looking for. Don't put the limits on God by only seeking him from time to time. Let him show you what he has the power to do for you all the time. Well, guys, like I said earlier, this is the last painting I'm able to do with you, at least here in Texas. We drive out in a few days, so when I get settled in, which should be in a couple of weeks or so, I'll pick right back up where I left off with you. And trust me, I'm really looking forward to that. So in the meantime, this concludes this tutorial. And if you enjoyed it or even just enjoyed the ministry, please be sure to not only share it, but to also hit like and subscribe for more videos. Liking and subscribing tells YouTube that you want to see more of my work and perhaps listen to more ministry as well. And we all need some ministry in our lives with a paintbrush in hand, of course. But more importantly, remember to thank God for this opportunity and always paint from the soul.